All right, here we go. An edition of the Thanksgiving version. Dr. Lindsay, Dr. Dustin here. This is the Vital Wire. All right. What a week this is going to be going into Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, a great time for a lot of families getting together. It's also a, a little bit of a holy cow. The year's coming to an end. It flies by fast, I feel like, after this um, week. It just... And we've been saying that all year. It's mm -hmm. like, it yes, every year goes by so fast. But I really feel like from June to November, it's been like right now. So a uh, great topic today that we want to talk about is, and we're going to title, title this, uh, I don't know what we're going to title this yet, but it has something to do with really, they're thankful for no resolve. Maybe we'll just go with that. Thankful for no resolve, but we want to get into a little bit of uh, the, the structure and the meaning of, of Thanksgiving and what this is going to bring as we close out the, uh, the year, a great year compared to the past couple, yes. I feel like. Uh, but it's definitely a season for family. We hope everybody is going to be enjoying time with their family and friends and loved ones, the Thanksgiving Eves, uh, the Friendsgivings. Uh, do you do Friendsgiving? We used to. We haven't done it in the last couple of years, so maybe maybe it'll resurface. I, I think know. we, we should gotta get a bigger house, so we have to be friends. <laughs> and we're not one to add friends; we just keep adding babies. Oh, so, <laughs> yes. The kids' table is getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> you don't have time for people to be in the house. <laughs> so, moving on. Uh, Friendsgiving. I think we need to get this whole community to do like a big Friendsgiving. Like, like, what if we all bundled up and went to Frankie Martin's garden and just had a huge I love thanks. That idea. Giving. This is off the top. We've not talked about this. Mm -mm. I think we need to make this happen. Maybe 2024 Vital Performance will collaborate with people in the community to put on a huge Thanksgiving, Friendsgiving mm -hmm. at Frankie Martin's Garden. So there, it's out there. Uh, if you hear this, if you're at Frankie Martin's Garden, if you're one of the, the CEO or partners of Frankie Martin's Garden, we'd totally be up for that. Let's have that conversation. Yeah. However, this week, be intentional with family and friends and truly give thanks and go in with that thankful heart, the gratefulness. If you've followed us on the podcast, we led with one of these podcasts and the, the great, be grateful and thankful and be intentional with this time. Uh, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? What's kind of your schedule of events? We have Thanksgiving with my in-laws on actual Thanksgiving and then with my mom on the following day, and we do brunch with my dad's side on Thanksgiving, which I love. We've kind of turned it into more of brunch, That's so, so then cool. you're not eating turkey four times <laughs> within a five hour. Have a turkey span. and cheese omelet, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we love that. I like the brunch idea. If you guys haven't tried that, it's super fun. Shake it up a little bit. But. How big are your Thanksgivings? Like, do you have big family, big get together, or is it multiple little ones, or how does that work for you? So for my side of the family, it's smaller. Um, I. My parents only have me and my younger sister, who's a little bit younger than me. She's by nine years. Mm -hmm. And then on my husband's side, it's still the big family. And, <laughs> and for the first year, my, my mother-in-law is taking it over instead of his grandma. So that's, yeah. it's a new tra tradition. We're starting over there. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to see how it goes. So that means that the younger generations of us are, for the first year, bring, actually bringing stuff. So we actually have to cook this year. Now so you're on the hook. <laughs> you're on the hook. But I'm in charge of cookies, which is totally up my alley. So I'm, I'm good with it. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So uh, what about you guys? So dang it. I was trying to get out of that. Yeah, sorry. No. <laughs> so we, uh, we do Thanksgiving. We try to go down to Cuba, Missouri, mm -hmm. Sullivan area. That's where my parents are and get together with uh, my brothers down there. Ideally is what happens. Not every year does that happen. We, uh, I grew up with no plans, the plan, uh, not very structured with uh, uh, what rituals or not rituals, but uh, the, the consistency, the tradition. We don't really have traditions of this is where we go on this day. So, but we try to make a day to where we go down to Cuba, Missouri and spend time with my family. 
And most of the time, especially Erica's family, you got the Greek side in there. And any, any big, like they feel better about themselves when they have a big celebration and they can drink and have wine. And we don't have to make up little celebrations to drink and have wine because it's like, oh man, are we, what are we? <laughs> Woo. But so these big celebrations for the, for the Greek side of the family and uh, the Irish and Greek together, it's just always a good time. Oh, yeah. So, but they super, yes, yes. <laughs> And what I love about that is they are, they are super intentional with the time, with the family they get. Not always do we get together, but when we get together, there is a lot of love in the room and very, very intentional with the time. So what is, what is your favorite thing about Thanksgiving? Of the intentionality, like what, or maybe this year, what do you feel that you can go into Thanksgiving and try to get out of it? Pour into it, but get out of it intentionally. I, I think it's just being with family not being wrapped up in the production of Thanksgiving. Not not worrying about, you know, if the turkey is going to come out at the so right time. Good. Or, you know, if all of the sides need to be on the table at the same time. It's easy to get caught up in wanting it to be perfect. To the potatoes are going to be cold. That everyone's there at the same time. Because that, that's not going to happen when yeah. you have a big family. There's going to be people that come late or show up early and, and because they have to leave early and hit another house. Mm-hmm. That happens, and I, I don't think that's what it's about. I think it's about just being there to spend time with them, hear what's going on in their lives, because how often do you get to do that with your aunt or uncle or yeah. you know, sit on the floor and play with the little ones that you don't get to spend time with? So that's, that's what it is to me. Is That's going to be my goal going into Thanksgiving is just that intentional time with family. Yeah, and, and that's something that I am going to work on too. I don't really like being in the limelight. I don't like all the, like... I actually, and it now... It says th- the race car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm in the car. You can't see me. I can't hear anything else around me. Like, yeah, it's a cool thing, but it can sit out there and get its own attention. I can be in here. and like, But so I, it's, I am actually, I prefer to just show up early. Like, show up early so I can kind of warm up into, like, I don't want to be the one that walks through the door and is like, hey! Like, oh my gosh, like, ah, oh, okay, hi. He doesn't have an entrance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You, you come in, like, yeah, gunslinging. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> uh, but so I think for, for me, is like really ex- accepting that for how excited they are versus the uncomfort that I feel. Because, like you said, it's, it's such a time to really be like, be grateful that everybody is in the same room. Yeah. So that's something I have to work on in a lot of these scenarios. And, and I love the holidays. It's just typically it's harder for me because of my wiring. So and I think a lot of people are like that. And as we talk about these things in the podcast, you get to know a little bit about us. But maybe it's something similar that you all go through that I know not. I am not the only one in this boat to where it's like, holy cow, I love seeing everybody. But it's like, oh, my gosh, there's so much going on. and There's so many people. And hey, hey, you got 16 conversations going on. But enjoy that. Because like you said, there's a lot of times you have family come that you live two miles from and hardly ever see, or that live 2,000 miles away and they're in town for this. They made that time this year or every year and being intentional with that. But I really like what you said about do not worry about everything else. Because, and, and I hear this, we hear this all the time in the practice, no matter what's going on, I all, my heart kind of sinks a little bit when people are like, oh yeah, it's going to be busy and there's a lot going on. And it's just like, well, guess what? Enjoy that. Yeah. Like, I get it. There is there is a bit of a production to this. Yeah. And not Especially always... Especially if it's at your house. <laughs> yeah. And there's going to be messes. There's going to be cleanup. There's never enough seats. there. But how many people come to your house saying, I hope the potatoes are just as hot as the turkey when they right. come out? Yeah. Or, or no one cares that maybe you didn't have a box of tissues out in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, those little things that you think matter, but they don't right. really. Like, no one's judging you if there's dust on your ceiling. Fan. <laughs> <laughs> because they'd much rather the food be... Uh, there and the community be there and they're not looking for dust bunnies on the ceiling fan. No. They're not. And if they are, they're like, huh, well, at least the food's great and the community's great and the family's awesome. And so, like, it, but it does, it sinks my heart a little bit that I get how this can be a stressful time, but truly, truly enjoy it. There's, none of us are getting any younger 
And this can really let this time set the gratefulness up going into 2023, because there's a topic we're going to get to in a second that this can really be the starting line for your 2023. So practice the gratitude. And here's the other thing. And I think a lot of people need to hear this and and really take it. If you hear nothing else from this podcast, listen to this. The production can be very overwhelming, and there's a lot of people that want to take it on. And oh, I'm I'm the cook, so the turkey, the beans, the this, the that, the that. But here's the thing: as soon as you start to feel that stress, how am I going to get all this done? Oh, I got to go to the store. Try this: call somebody that is going to be at your house and say, "Can you bring this?" Everybody typically likes to bring something, or I know you're bringing the the green bean casserole. Can you pick up some chips for the dip? Yep. Can you bring some extra napkins? Because I think a lot of times, like, man, as a host or even going, it's like, I got to have all this done. Well, give the other side some grace. Like, oh, they've got a lot to do too. But if you're feeling it, ask for help. Our biggest thing this year and something that we're continually getting better at is people want to help you. Let them. So all to say, let this time be joy. Let it be thanks. Be grateful for everything that's about to happen um, Thursday for Thanksgiving. And just ask for help if you need it. I don't want my heart to sink for everybody else being stressed out about the holidays. I know. And this is something that I have to, and you'll get it if you're a mom, we're, we're big on routine. Mm-hmm. We have to let go of the routine for this day. They may not nap. It's mm-hmm. okay. Or they may nap in the car for 20 minutes instead of two hours. Or, you know, they may need a snack to hold them over until the dinner is on the table because it may not hit the table at five like they're used to. You know, you might have to bring some stuff to keep them entertained because you're at a house that doesn't have toys. It's a little stressful for for parents, especially with littles. You understand you got three little ones. (laughs) But just not letting that ruin the day, not letting that ruin Mm -hmm. what the day is about. Yeah, Uh, because and also the people that are there are going to expect some level of that. So no judgment. They are kids. Let the kids rule the roost. As long as they're smiling, giggling, if they're begging for food, at least they're eating. Um, Let them fatten up, be happy and be loud. It's all okay. And guess what? Christmas is right around the corner after that. You have less than 30 days to prep for that. So just let this momentum of grateful and just kind of, that's where no plan is the plan. Kind of is a good way to grow up, I guess. I like the structure, so I didn't really like that. But it's just like, we know what we're doing. And when we get there, whatever happens, happens. Mm -hmm. Just let it happen. So then we quickly go into Christmas season. And so we're not going to speak too much on on Christmas. Maybe we'll save that for another podcast. Yeah, but I'm going to talk about Christmas with lights. (laughs) They're trying to put lights up in the practice as we speak. <laughs> I'm a big... So are, are you guys a decorate, like November comes and decorate, or is the it Christmas after... Christmas tree comes today, so it will probably be going up. Andrew, tomorrow. you better be working on that right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> expecting Amazon to deliver the tree any moment. Just waiting for the test. <laughs> See, and we do it day after, day after Thanksgiving. So Friday, things go up. So we'll save the whole Christmas for another podcast. Yep. But what I want to take a little bit of time transitioning into, we're going to be grateful for Thanksgiving. We're going to enjoy our family. Pick something out to be intentional with, people to connect with. uh, Let the kids run rampant. Now we're going to shift gears to what else this time is. And it's the starting line. And I already kind of mentioned this, the starting line for 2023. I think if we all take some time to prep now for resolution season, we can get ahead and a better understanding, not feel rushed. Like I, everybody feels like they have to have a resolution. So I just want to play into that. But I think there's a lot of, and we've talked about this, a little bit of, of the negative connotation or what do I do or the typicals. Um, so I just want to just real quick touch on the people you are with, like maybe prod the resolution talk for a reason. Because if we all start to start this conversation now and get ahead of this resolution thing that you're going to do come January anyway, mm-hmm. you can t- start to take the family, the cousins, the sisters, the friends that might be there, and you can start to build community around a resolution and drive more success with something that you're going to set goals for in 2023, starting on 
Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, this whole week, when you, as you see more people, you can start, what are you going to, have you thought about your resolutions? No, no, that's still, well, I've already kind of thought about mine, or, you know, I think it'd be fun if we can do something together. And you can start to build community around that, which also builds accountability. And it can be very fun instead of like the, oh man, okay, I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. We'll see how long it lasts. (laughs) I don't know how many times I've said that myself, but going into that, I think easing into it, that's a great way to think of it. It's, Start making your plan now. I mean, how many times have we said that it takes baby steps for for habits to be in place and Mm -hmm. that consistency? So what if, let's say your resolution is to drink more water and you just slowly now start building up to what you want your goal to be instead of just being like, I'm going to drink 32 ounces of water before noon. (laughs) Making it more attainable for yourself in the future so that you can maybe reach that goal, that resolution. And then also taking this time, I I think it's an emotional pull while you're around family and you are feeling that gratefulness, uh, that it's an emotional pull. And I want you guys to think of as we spend this time and and if you go down this resolution road like we're talking about, you can really figure out why. Why do you want that resolution? Oh, because I want to look good in the mirror. No, that's not just it. It's like, let's think of this next level because all those kids that you brought or maybe the grandkids that are there or whatever it is, like there's a higher motive for these resolutions. And if you don't have a higher motive for the resolution that you're picking, then pick a different resolution yeah. because there's there should be that uh, emotional attachment, that drive, that self gratitude of like, man, I did it, or man, I'm glad I look better or feel better or whatever that is. But also because I look and feel better, I can do this. And maybe it's the family around you that you pulled in with you. Like I'm, as we set up that vacation, we've talked about that vacation, we set the resolution around it and we're going to go in, you know, in the best health and the, in the best way or whatever it is, have a higher reasoning for it. And so here's, Here's the status quo uh, topics or for for resolutions. Um, health, number one. We all know that. Everybody's like, oh, I got to make a health goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, true, I don't disagree with that. I think we can go down a whole avenue of where we think you should start. We could be here all day. <laughs> I mean, if you could come into one office and really start to reach your health goal, get an avenue, get a track, get a, get a plan, get camaraderie, get community, and really support. achieve your, your support, huge, and really achieve your health goal, uh, this is the office for you. Like, I don't know how to do this. I want to do this. I want to succeed in this. If you want one health place to go and strategy to go, we will help you do that 100%. And celebrate those little wins. Because yeah. not everybody will do that with yeah. you. They're like, well, you still didn't reach your goal. Not yeah. here. You're here to lose 30 pounds? Well, you've made it to three. You've got 27 to go. Yeah. We'd be like, yeah, yeah. Hey, right direction. <laughs> There's a way to go about the success in this. So if I, if I'm, be biased. I don't care. Yeah. Like, if you want to succeed in a health goal, come to this office. We will help you succeed in whatever health goal you want. Yeah. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Before you get me on a soapbox, self-improvement, again, this office is a great opportunity for that as well. Yep. Money, family, love, career, and don't have one. And surprisingly enough, around 25% of people don't have one. Which uh, is interesting. It is. And I kind of fall into that category. I, I uh, a little bit against the grain, but here's, here's why. And I told you I was going to go a little bit on a rant here. We can talk about some of these, but uh, thankful for no resolve. What I really want people to realize is there's no resolve. Like, why is it a resolution? I want to, like, once you drop the 30 pounds, is that it? Yeah. Like, is it over? Like, oh. The end of your goal. Mm -hmm. Okay, after I save, you know, $15,000, like, is that it? Are you, like, are you never, like, are we implanting? I've always wondered, are we implanting, like, oh, I did it, and now it's check the box off, I'm done with that. And that's kind of what I, what I worry for people, and, and that's how I make sense of it for myself. And so if that helps in some way, just know that there's no resolve. That's why I really don't have one, but I do have very, I, I mean, I do have goals. I do have things that I want, I want to achieve. I just thought it was interesting that, you know, 25% of people don't have a resolution. And so I wonder, like, is that because they fear that they're not going to reach that goal, mm-hmm. or do they struggling to narrow it down. Well, I don't have just one set goal. I just want to improve my health overall. And they're like, so I don't have one because I don't have anything in particular. Like, 
I don't yeah. want to run a mile in under so many minutes or something like that. So, mm-hmm. and that's okay. I feel like that's almost better. Make it broad. Yeah. I feel like that can make you feel more successful in your overall goal. Yeah. And then we can get into a whole, a whole mindset scenario too of um, kind of the feel of fear of failure. That's, and, and I think that's what you're getting at. And I think that's a yes. great point because it's like, well, man, that's a tall goal. I want to look like I did in high school. And I keep going back to that because it's the most easy. And I yeah. get why and that's a lot of people. it's common, I feel like, for right. most people. And, you know, you have kids and things change. You grow a dad bod. Like, I get it. I'm, 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 I'm there. <laughs> but, it, but at the same time, it, it can seem overwhelming because we start to get down on ourselves and doubt ourselves. And I am, I am the first person to do that. I get it. Um, so that's why I, I like to inspire you all in route to inspire myself that it's okay. Meet yourself where you're at and do not fear of success and in, in, in fear of failure are two things that we really need to decide that we have an issue with and separate. So it's like, what if I achieve that goal? Like, holy cow. But what if I fail? But what if you don't like, do not like, And I think a lot of people, and I've been on this kick too, and I've heard this very recently, is it's like, well, if I fail, I mean, sometimes it's not even the fear of failing at the goal. It's like, how how do I recover? Like, and how do I recover how I look? Because I told these people I was going to do it, and there's people that knew I was going to shoot for that goal, and I didn't make it. Like, how do I recover from that, um, from an outside viewership in, and from knowing that I fail? It's up to you whether you fail or not. Whatever you think you're right, and I'll never be able to do that. Well, you're right. But, oh, man, I'm super excited to do that. I know I'm going to. Yes, you are. You're right. You can do that. So that's such a great point as far as, like, like it, it can be daunting. And the, the fear of, of failing at that thing, don't let that define your resolution or define your year. How about we just commit to the succeeding in that but putting the circle around you that's going to support you and celebrate the little wins because you can do anything you want. You want to buy the new car. You want to look better in the mirror. You want the six-pack abs. I, I almost stopped at six-pack. You want the six-pack. <laughs> headed to the headed QT. Uh, you want the six-pack abs. Like, you, know, you want the $15,000 in the bank account extra than what you have now. Like You can do all those things. Put the steps in place. Yeah. Now, those are all pretty status quo things. Like we went through the categories, money, love, and, and I think that's a whole nother one we can touch on. Like I think we all can further our relationships with ourselves, our, which is self-improvement, but love as far as even our spouses. A lot of people are looking for love. Oh man, I hope you meet my husband this year. I hope I meet my wife this year. But how about those of us that have those people, how about we set a resolution or again, there's no resolve in that. There's no resolve in, in it's just in continued improvement. Yeah, exactly. What are you going to continually improve this year? Uh, but I think we all that have those people in particular, I think relationships. So it said love. I think relationships are something all of us should set a continue improvement plan for in 2023, no matter if it's best friend, family, spouse, um, kids, kids, huge one. But what are, what are some of the non status quo things that come to mind for, for continued improvement slash resolution? Well, finance was one on the list, but what I think of is maybe you are saving for something in particular. Like, not just making more money, mm-hmm. but saving, really nailing down. Maybe a budget is something that you guys need to mm-hmm. work on. I, that's something we always talk about in our house is what is the budget. Um, and if you know my husband, you know that's true. <laughs> <laughs> to the penny, Andrew. Um, <laughs> maybe you guys have always dreamed of taking a trip to Hawaii. And mm-hmm. it's just little by little saving. You're going to save a little bit more each month so that you can reach that goal. And maybe it looks like that, just mm-hmm. a little bit different. But I, I love what you said about relationships. And I think that's something that everyone should consider making a resolution with. Um, yeah. And improving. And maybe it's a different relationship every month. Like, alternate. Maybe relationships and business. You really want to focus on that. And you're going to really focus on the steps to do that. And then just keeping that up throughout the year. Yeah. And then adding a new component each month. Mm-hmm. Looking at it a little different. Yeah, and there's, uh, again, we could do a whole, we might have to write that down and do a whole topic on that because I have a whole lot of ideas on really how to further the relationship and even just starting with the spouse, but kids. Like a whole resolution can be, you know what, I am going to commit at least a half hour every night 
to my kids unobstructed, like after dinner's done or before dinner, I'm going to get home and that's my time with the kids before dinner's done. And I say that because that's something that I personally want to do. A lot of times we can come home and get stuck in the grind and, you know, and be like, and I'll just myself as an example, go, 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 pour into people every day, help a lot of people and just mentally exhausted at the end of the day. It's like, okay, hug and kiss the kids and wife when I get home. And then I'm just like, unload, like just unload and de-stress a little bit and just kind of be myself for a minute. And then dinner happens, kids go to bed, and then I'm sitting around getting ready to cool down for the rest of my night. And I'm like, I didn't spend really any quality time with the kids. And now they're in bed. Yeah, now they're in bed. And I, if I go wake them up or deter them from bedtime, you, you know how it works. There's that window. Yeah. It's like you put them down and they're in their routine. It's like, man, that went so easy. But if you're 12 minutes off, they're up for the next 45 minutes. It's like, I committed to a half hour, not 45 minutes. <laughs> so, but setting I'm a resolution. impressed yours is down to a half hour or 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lindsay's not everyone's laying in their their nursery floor with one arm in the bed still for an hour. <laughs> Doc- like, uh-huh. I love you too. Yeah. Go to sleep. <laughs> Dr. Lindsay's got her phone in the other hand sending us gifts of these faces like Ella won't go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> now we're singing the ABCs for the second time. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, it's, so think of the non-status quo. And like you said, I think a lot of people have hopes and dreams and we just think of hopes and dreams. Oh, I'll never be able to do that. But it's like that trip to Hawaii. Like mm-hmm. what if you just set a resolution to, I am going to start saving. I'm going to, I am going to check the box off when I get one person's airfare saved. Yeah. So I have five people in my family. We're going to go to Hawaii. Ours would be Greece. We're going to go to Greece. And I know I need $18,000 to get to Greece. Mm-hmm. So divided by three, so 3,500 bucks ish. Like once I save 3,500 bucks, Erica's tickets paid for, Kenton's tickets paid for, uh, Camden's tickets paid for. Like, and and let that be a sign of progress in those things. Uh, You you want a new house? We're going to talk to Dr. Lindsay's right now. If she was struggling with this resolution, I would say like, figure out what that is and what, what, what is the down payment? Like you have to have, you know, I need eighteen thousand dollars. Why am I at eighteen? Mm-hmm. I need twenty one thousand dollars. It's like, okay, so I'm gonna break this into chunks. Well, speaking of football, it's football season. Well, that's three sevens. <laughs> so it's like it's three sevens. So seven thousand dollars at a time. I do that three times and I have like and let that be show progress, but set your non status quo resolutions. Less huh. This thing right here. There is a setting on here. I don't know how fast I can get to it. It really doesn't matter. But, uh, oh, there it is. Look at that. This is astounding. I'm going to be very candid on here. Your phone, for those of us that aren't watching. I got my phone. No, it just went up. I'm just looking at it. It How does it go up an hour? (laughs) Set a resolution for this sucker. Screen time. Average. Hey, I'm down 36% from last week. I'm going to start with the good. My daily average is three hours and 14 minutes. I'd say that's pretty good. But I use it for work. I don't care what you use it for. Like, what if we set a resolution to put this thing down a little more? Well, and I think you said something at the beginning of talking about coming home in the evening, leaving work behind. That's, that is hard for a lot of people to not continue to work or think about work or do things or just be on or just be talking or griping about it. Maybe you had a bad day and letting that, those emotions and that feeling drag into your, your time with family. Yep. So maybe that's your resolution, is leaving that in the car or yep. <laughs> leaving that at the office. Maybe that means, like, I'm not going to do any more emails once I get out of the office. I'm mm-hmm. not going to look at my email. Maybe that is I'm not going to let that, that bad deal that went through or didn't go through yep. continue on. I'm going to be happy. I'm not going to be griping about that. I'm not going to be sad. I'm going to be happy when I come to the door to see my family because they're happy to see me. Yep. So maybe that's a different way of looking at your resolution, too. Yeah. So don't let it be an overwhelming time. We kind of covered a lot so far. (laughs) Be thankful over Thanksgiving. I mean, and I think it was very necessary and I hope it helps people. I mean, this is inspiring for us to really start to get, nobody wants to come from behind, but nobody, 
may, people might not have the resources on how to not come from behind. I say that a lot. Like, I don't want to feel like I'm coming from behind. Like, I want to start a game 0-0, zero, zero, or I'd rather start ahead, but I never want to come from behind. Like, I'd rather just, let's start 0-0, zero, zero, but there's preparation that has to happen to do that. So whether it's Thanksgiving dinner, but right now, calendar year, setting up for 2023, let's start with resolution. We can carry this on into future podcasts, setting up for 2023, but let's not come from behind. Let's... Be thankful for this week we're about to have with family, with friends, with great food. Don't let it be stress. If you need help, ask and just enjoy the process. If there's something you need to clear up with a family member, because I guarantee you, not all, not one family has perfect. Everybody's rah rah cheery, looking to hug everybody. Like if there's something that you feel you need to clear up with that somebody in the family, say hey. I want to enjoy time with you. I know there's been a lot of things going on. You know, siblings can have this happen. Like, it happens. Let's clear that up now before Thursday comes, and let's enjoy the process. But let's also use this as a time to really set up 2023, our resolutions season going forward, our continued improvement, and let us know if we can help. Uh, as far as anything, we are here to help. We are here to build community. Let us know. Support. Yeah, we're here to support uh, so anything that we can do going forward for you, feel free to reach out, leave us feedback, let us know you've watched. If there's anybody you think should be on the Vital Wire, let us know. Uh, hope you guys have a great, great Thanksgiving. See ya! <laughs>